Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from a known brand. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard of or may actually own an LTC Nimbleback NB631. Now that is an interesting 65% uh, that shares a layout with the Icky Aurora or the Icky 68. So it's basically an FRL 65%. So it has an arrow cluster and it has like a little four key cluster at the top that it has no function around. Now I have reviewed the LTC Neon in the past. That's actually why LTC reached out to me. They had some corrections for me. I am going to be taking another look at the Neon with the feedback that they've given me and I perhaps will uh, uh, be um, correcting my review. But um, they asked me if I wanted to take a look at their new 75% with a knob and I was like, why not? I've taken a look at almost all of them. Let's go take a look at this one. So today we're taking a look at the Nimbleback LTC NB831. 75% with a knob, three mode wireless, 83 key. All right, let's open her up. manual with the keyboard. We're just going to set this aside for a second. Let's see. You've got your standard fare, the USB-C to USB-A cable, and then we have one of the pullers that I prefer, the metal uh, switch and key cap pullers. So we'll go ahead and leave it there. I do not see a 2.4 gigahertz dog, so I'm going to assume that it is attached to the keyboard. And here we are. Here's the LTC Nimbleback NB831. Um, I'm going to guess it's 831 based on the fact that it has 83 keys. Now, uh, we do have a knob. We have a, an exploded navigation cluster, an exploded arrow cluster. Um, the knob appears to be metal on the outside with a uh, plastic inner collar. Now, if you want to replace these, please note, most of the knobs that came out over the last couple of years were D knobs, but this is a round knob. And uh, what you're going to need is a six millimeter uh, round knob, um, and you want to make sure that it's no more than 22 millimeters in diameter. If not, it will not fit. Now, how do I know it's 22 millimeters? Because I've seen this keyboard before. So, um, any of the knobs that have the little screw to tighten it. Uh, should work on any of these. The D knobs are not going to work. Let's take a look at the rest of these. We've got, I believe we've got red switches. Yep, we've got red switches, and these are uh, Huano. All right, Huano's usually a little bit better of a switch than, um, say, a couple of the other ultra budgets. We do have five pin hot swap compatibility and we have north facing LED and um, we don't seem to have a uh, lately I've been seeing a lot of the boards that they come pre-installed with either a, a PE foam, IPXE foam, a pad above the, the um, PCB to either dampen the sound or make it more poppy. We do have plate to PCB foam as well as case foam. So we should have a pretty well dampened case, although well being that it's a steel plate and that these switches are not lube, they're stock, we are going to get ping out of this, unfortunately. So now before I've said I've come across this keyboard before because this is a keyboard that's been white labeled several times over and I'm going to give you guys a, a quick little shot at the back and see if you guys can figure out what keyboard this is. Does this look familiar to you? Now maybe? No? How about now? Hmm? Alright, now that we've got that out of the way. Now we see that we have the pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle right here and we do have type c 
Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz receiver as well as two fold down legs that's going to give you a, a choice of three different typing angles. Now let's check out the RGB real quick. One thing I do want to say about this keyboard that I found that I like, I mean I don't like this but we can't really help it. Keyboard manufacturers are going to repurpose LEDs although I mean that's why we have you know, an LED cluster here you could have added a charging light here and I mean though it does show the indicator if only if you're on mobile you can press um I believe it's function this oh, that's the on and off light uh, function backspace I believe and it'll give you the um, the indicator basically it'll go up to full green I think or fully charges either f10 or f8 but then it gets lower as it goes down now why they couldn't in, uh, include an LED here that was red, orange, green, yellow, you know, depending on the charging state. I don't know. But one thing that they did do is they made it really easy um, to change the effects. So function up changes whatever effect the keyboard is currently using. Function down will change that into a solid color. Function left, right will just speed it up or slow it down. Function up, change effect. And function down, change colors. All right, let's leave it there on some static. So we have a, uh, an actually a decent uh, user manual based on many user manuals that I've seen in the past. This is one of the better ones it's on nice cardstock. It's color. It stands out. Um, it's it's going to be easy to read and understand for a lot of people. Uh, sometimes uh, the text on these things is tiny. It's like I don't have, I mean I actually have pretty good near sightedness and uh, I sometimes have to pull out the loop or Get, get it right up to my face to read it. So it's nice to have these big, bright um, colors and showing. But yeah, there's there's the uh, check cold issue. Yeah, it goes up to F, F10. But that only works when you're in wired mode. You also have a Windows and an Apple mode, and you have the three Bluetooth device pockets in the one, two, three, and the four is the 2.4 gigahertz mode, and five is wired mode. Oh, that's keyboard state. It doesn't do that. Kind of wish that it would do that. I mean, what if I want to know if I'm in Apple's or Windows mode? I guess I don't get to know if I'm wired. I don't know. So anyway, uh, we do have uh, 2.4 gigahertz, and I believe it's 5.0 Bluetooth on here. So I personally prefer. A lot of people ask, do you use 2.4? Do you use Bluetooth? Well, if I've got Bluetooth 5 or higher gonna use Bluetooth so I've got Bluetooth 5 um, host devices or all of my laptops or PCs workstations all have Bluetooth 5 so I'd rather work over that it uses less power and it's got a much greater range um, that said if you don't have Bluetooth 5.0 2.4 may work better for you but that depends on your particular environment let's get technical Today we're taking a look at the LTC Nimbleback NB831. This is a three mode, 83 key, 75% wireless keyboard with a knob. It has a stock weight of 907 grams and a choice of either white or black ABS cases. It does come with Huano Reds stock. It currently MSRPs for $89.99 on Amazon but is on sale for $71.99 on ltcofficial.com. It has fully programmable keys through its software, except for obviously changing the preset keys that are used for the built-in functions. It also has per-key RGB. It comes installed with PBT OEM double shot, one millimeter thick body keycaps. It has a chin of 21 millimeters, a back of 34 millimeters and a default typing angle of 7 degrees. If you use the, 
the first set of legs to raise it up, you will get a, t a back height of 40 millimeters with a 10 degree typing angle. Using the last and final feet, you will raise the back up to 48 millimeters with a typing angle of 14 degrees. From what I can gather, this appears to be similar or the same as the Fokker IK75 Ultra. I say Ultra because of the way that the knob is. Now, honestly, being that this is right now uh, sells for 72 on ltcofficial.com on their site. Uh, it is on sale on Amazon too, but I, I think it's a few bucks more. But to get this kit from LTC, you're going to be getting it cheaper than you would the IK75 Ultra, though you're not going to get uh, the polycarbonate plate. Though the plate can be purchased uh, third party. So if you really wanted to, you could probably build yourself a cheaper Fecker using this one. And it does have the solid color case, although the IK75 Ultra also has the solid case. The milky cases and the see-through transparency, those are the B3 Pro. The Ultra is the newest one. I don't know why they use this name in convention. Uh, but So this one is actually, I think this one's for the Ultra. It seems to fit. But, I don't know, we'll take a look at it. I will be coming back to this keyboard and giving it the full mod treatment to see what we can make it sound like. I, this is uh, the third or the fourth now that I have um, of this white labeled version. I mean, Becker IK75 is probably not the, even the original name, but who knows if we'll ever know who the actual manufacturer is. But we do know, or at least I know that a lot of people seem to like this keyboard. The layout is very nice. Um, obviously, it's copying one in particular, which also copied another one, but we won't go there. So anyway, this keyboard, for for the price, the fact that it comes with switches, with keycaps, is not a bad deal. And I think that if you're willing to you know, put the work into it, it's going to sound uh, decent enough. I'm afraid that in its stock format, it doesn't give me the impression that it's going to sound... I mean, it's not going to sound that all that awful. The... Um, the stabs are actually not bad at all. Surprisingly well tuned and actually lubricated, but not not doused in lubrication, but just enough lubrication for it to work and sound nice. So, but I don't know if you you guys probably heard me talking about these particular type of stabs before. These are probably the cheapest OEM stabs that are available out there. And um, so on the stab front, even though I'm going to tune them when I come back to modify it, I'm probably going to say that placing the sta stabilizers on this keyboard is probably a thing to do if you do plan to mod it. Um, I rarely say that, but these milky white ones, I mean, they just, they, they require way too much work. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know I could tape mod it so that it clips on tighter because they are a little loose. So it clips on tighter to the plate. And I know I can give it two wraps of the plumber's tape. And they're going to work a lot better. But there's always going to be something that just makes them feel a little off. Um, so, obviously, some corners were cut. But again, um, I have seen the IK75 bare bone for as much as $110. Now, yeah, that's a little much, but you get where I'm going with this. I mean, this is an IK75 Ultra white label version. So if you really want that one, the software on this one is really nice. Um, I'll, I'm going to throw up some screenshots so you guys can see, but I mean, it's like the other Chinese manufacturer's uh, software, but it does have per key RGB and it does allow you to change the knob not function knob, just the default layer, but you can change the knob functionality, which is nice. And I do know a few keyboards that will not allow you to do that. So um, I think they they made some extra effort in the software, which is great. Uh, but I think they made a few choices that I mean I would have been willing to pay a few dollars more. Um, you know, granted, I know I I received this one from LTC, but if I was 
customer and I was buying it as I've bought most of my keyboards I would have been fine to pay a few dollars more had they put in some better stabilizers colored ones and had they included either some different switches or some pre lube switches now I know that that costs a little bit more but it's not going to cost them that much more you're talking about a couple maybe three cents per switch more but I'm just afraid these reds are not going to do justice to this keyboard when I do a sound test. <clears throat> but I don't think it's going to sound awful, mind you. I just think that there's there's too much pain. I mean, with any of these keys. So, in... When I come back to this video, I'm definitely going to open it up and I'm going to take a look at you know, how much padding is in there because despite there being so much padding, I mean, granted, like I said, that you got that steel plate, so not much you can do about that. It does have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery as opposed to the, the Fecker, so if you're not going to be using it wireless all that often, even better. I mean, I personally, I like the, 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 the wired version just as well but I don't use wireless all that often I know some people depend on wireless so at least with this one you're gonna have 5.0 you're gonna have the 2.4 and you've got a total of four devices that you can pair with this so what I'm gonna do today is go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this nimble bag LTC NB831 and see what you guys think of it I will be coming back to this video in the near future to you know, just see what we can make this puppy sound like um, definitely going to be taking out the switches replacing the caps and we're probably going to be doing a tape mod p foam mod um, we'll see what other mods we we get into maybe try some of that that the painter's tape burger mount that i just read about on the uh, sub sounds interesting but i've got a couple of different ideas for some mods that i think will take this keyboard to the next level so for right now, just leaving you guys with a stock sound test. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.